Hello everybody, welcome to XCOM Chimera Squad. I'm really excited to play this. I've played the other XCOMs in the series and I was so excited when this came out. Okay, and I'll be playing on Expert. Not because I feel that I am one, but I've played XCOM, so I should put up the challenge level just a little bit, I think. I'm not going to do the Iron Man or the Hardcore, mostly because if the save file messes up, then kind of like the same problem with Observation, there's no way for me to go back and um, go to a previous save file. And I'm going to take off Tutorial. All right, let's get to it. Tonight, Mayor Nightingale perished in an explosion at City 31's Memorial Museum. The identity of her assailants is unknown at this time. The city council asks citizens to remain... So she gets vaporized the same day XCOM sends Chimera Squad to our city? You hear that voice in your head? That's me telling you to wake up! Despite opposition, Mayor Nightingale's deciding vote brought the reclamation agency to the city. Without her support, Chimera Squad's continued presence is an open question. Okay, whenever you skip the tutorial, you can go here and pick anybody that you want to for your team. Because if you don't, if you do the tutorial, you are usually um, starting out with the Burge, Terminal, Cherub, and Godmother. So let me see, who would I like? Port now Axiom. I don't know how you wouldn't start with him or Terminal. She, he's brute force, and uh, terminal is healing. Two things that you really need. Now, Verge is able to use psychokinetic powers. That's helpful. And Zephyr is is interesting, and she's an up close and personal powerhouse. Hmm, it's a tough choice. And the reason I'm saying it's a tough choice is because Cherub has an ability that has a kinetic shield. And that phalanx can help you in missions whenever you're trying to protect somebody. Oh, so you can't select those ones. Interesting. This is so difficult. Chimera Squad, heads up. Director's on the line from XCOM HQ. Chimera Squad, I know you're still settling in, but this cannot wait. A short time ago, insurgents crashed the opening of City 31's Memorial Museum. They took Mayor Nightingale hostage. 3-1 PD attempted a rescue, but the insurgents triggered a plasma bomb. Everyone inside was lost. Yes, 3-1 PD should have requested our help. But dwelling on that is counterproductive. We need to focus on what we do next. A crude plasma bomb killed the mayor. The insurgents had no access to materials for that. Does that mean they had outside help? Most likely. There are three groups in City 31 with access to this kind of ordinance. Scavengers would probably have plasma bombs. Probably who we should start with first. Gray Phoenix is a group of primarily muton scavengers operating in the city. Recently, they've armed themselves with highly restricted weaponry. That puts them on our radar. Director, these are local criminals. Isn't that 3-1PD's jurisdiction? True. 
The Reclamation Agency supports local police, but we're also required to recover dangerous material. From those who would do the world harm, and each of those groups is neck deep in the stuff. So what next? Focus on a single group. Investigate, dismantle their operations, and take them down. Meanwhile, we look for any links to the mayor's death. Either way, a dangerous organization is off the streets. Exactly. The city wants justice for Mayor Nightingale. This is how we help them achieve it. Okay, normally you'll have this investigation status and things will show up here as you gain more intel, more information, everything. I also like the fact that they have uh, Kelly, and for those of people who have played XCOM 2, she was the first character that you get in that game. And many people, the way they played it, they tried to keep her alive all the way to the end of XCOM. I know I did. And by the end, she was a badass. So, it's nice to see that they added her to the canon of the story. It also provides a little bit of continuity. Welcome to City 31. During Advent's occupation, the city was a fortress supporting an active starport. Five years after XCOM won the war, it's home to aliens, hybrids, and humans alike. There's new industry, self-government, and local agriculture to support the varied populations. Against all odds, this city thrived after the war. There were no retributive attacks. Until tonight. We don't know that. Not yet. But we can find out. Now, I know a lot of people online have taken issue with the fact that you are now dealing with just one city as opposed to an entire planet. Um, really, the whole situation hasn't changed from XCOM or XCOM 2. The same objectives are there, the same type of building. You don't have base building in this, which I know a lot of people miss. I know I miss it, but it's not necessary. And I think that it um, has advantages to the storyline by keeping it the way it is. Check it out. Headquarters sent us an assembly. And with the right patterns, we can build anything. Or we could with the latest version. What you're looking at is the extremely finicky 2038 model. It'll take time to stress test our patterns. But once we have them, we're good to go. So in other words, an overly glorified 3D printer. Okay, you'll have to do this one first and it starts off everything else. It kind of explains here what the costs are, both with Illyrium and time. You can usually put somebody here and it speeds up its progress. So there's benefits to having characters outside of the, uh, the main group that's going in for these missions. I'm authorizing Chimera Squad for special operations. Some ops provide useful resources for the squad. Keep an eye out for these opportunities. I really like this because it gives a little bit more consistency to getting certain bonuses. Like say, for example, if you're low on Illyrium, then you go do an Illyrium sting. Or if you need more money, you'll go do a special ops on this glad handling. Things like that. You can use it to supplement it to what you, your current needs are in the game. Right now, I don't have the amount of leg... Leg work. I don't have the amount of team members necessary to put anybody in any particular slot, so... When you aren't on mission, you need to maintain your skills. Physical and mental. Training is the place to do it. It's also where you can adapt to any lasting wounds received in the field. So don't let those wounds linger. You'll pay for them in the long term. Now this is something a little bit different. If you remember from XCOM, some of your characters could wind up with wounds. Uh, and those, I think they were more permanent. It's been a while since I've played XCOM 2. Or XCOM for that matter. So... 
but here you're able to heal those wounds because you've only got a finite amount of crew. You're not having an influx of people that you can pay for new recruits and train them up. So their scars are not going to be permanent, but you can heal them here to help them recover. Kind of like the same type of way uh, your crew members in XCOM 2 would get tired and they would have to they would have to rest or they'd have to go to the infirmary in order to um, get back up to full strength. And this is just the same kind of thing. And here's where you will equip and assign people. Our temporary field office has all the basics, weapons, comms, and ammunition. Supply is where we request everything else. As long as it's in the squad's budget, it's ours. Okay. Now we definitely will need a med kit. Let me check first to make sure she doesn't already have one. Go ahead and buy a med kit. Now, trank rounds are important in this because killing people is not necessarily the goal. And I know that really bums some people out that why can't we just go full auto and just bloody everybody up? But that's not the focus of this story. Whereas in the past you were dealing with the elders and their taking over of humanity and taking over of Earth, those were bloody conflicts. There's no doubt. There's no other way that you could handle that. But now in Chimera Squad, what we're dealing is the after effects of a war and the fallout from that. You've got humans living alongside aliens and how... And, and hybrids, hybrids between the aliens, like the mutons and the sectoids, and and with humans, uh, where the elders were trying to mesh them together. And so you've got a city, which is a prime example of integration, and how that can be become how that can become successful or not. It's up to you and how you manage the city, which I think is important. So I can understand why they took on a more peaceful approach. Now they didn't limit you. You could go full bloody, kill everybody. But I have a feeling by the end of it, you're gonna regret it. Just a feeling I have. Because you get significant awards with info and intel if you take people alive. So, there we go. And how much money do we have left? Credit 65. What else do we need here? Flashbang. We have a breaching charge. Let's see. Disables all firearms in a large radius. This was very useful when I first... So we'll get that. Okay. And here's where the inf uh, investigation screen. In case you need to be reminded of where you're at. And here's a critical mission. We will have to do this today. What I like to do is outfit people before we go, just so I don't accidentally send them with the wrong thing. Because wouldn't that be embarrassing, to show up with all the wrong equipment?
right, let's do this. Say a hostile force has access to a dangerous device, but destroying it would cause harm to you or others. In that case, finesse is the better option. Approach the device and disable it just as you were trained. I do kind of wish that this, the launch um, cinematic was a little bit more grand than that. But also when I think about it, I'm not exactly sure how they would made it better. A short while ago, Gray Phoenix engaged unknown assailants at this location. After the shooting stopped, Gray Phoenix locked down the whole block. Would you say our arrival is key? Why did I ever teach you puns? Because you're very instructive. Kill me now. Okay, and here you'll put in what order. You'll also tell what kind of defense, if you have a defensive, if you're exposed, and what kind of bonuses you'll get whenever you do the breach. Now there's, there's always the breach and then there's the main part of the mission. So I like having him go in as breach first because he's got a shield. Followed by Axiom. Zephyr and then have terminal for any kind of healing at the end. Stay behind me. Now you'll notice here that these are yellow, and it'll tell you what information. It'll tell you what like if they're surprised, if they're aggressive. Um, because you might have to deal with them in different situations. Here it's yellow, so he's surprised. Meaning they're not going to take an action on this turn. Alert, I believe, they will make an action, but it won't be an attack. Aggressive are people that will attack on the next, on this turn. So you got to be careful. Always scan. See what my options are. He's a shit fire shark, so I'm going right for him. Now there's an equal amount of chance that I'll hit him. He's got he's got some shielding and armor right there, and I have an equal sh chance to shoot either. So if Zephyr can get them on the next go, and she connects with this shot, then I'll only have to deal with one person as far as two. Don't let it go to your head. There you go. And then you have a timeline where you'll see whose move is when, which is very key. Some things, um, some powers and abilities that your uh, characters have can move you up or down in this timeline. And it's very important to know and keep track of this. See. Cherub is going to have the next go before him. So if it's important to take him out beforehand, something you should consider. I'm just going to go ahead and do the charged bash from behind. You're clear. Go. Let me try again. He's going to make his move. Still on my feet. Now you get back. It's another thing. If you've got civilians in the way, if you get within one square of them, they all automatically are out of the way. 
The reason why that's important is if they get killed, just kind of like in XCOM 2, civilians are killed, then it's not good for your cause and people will start complaining against you. Off target. That's XCOM, baby. Fracturing. I'm getting a strong source of Illyrium in your vicinity. I can't pinpoint a location. What does Great Phoenix need with that much power? So we go back into breach mode. I'll tell you down here how many encounters you have left to go. And this is important because there's things you can do in between encounters to either heal yourself or prepare for the next assault. Now here we have more than one way we can go in. This one, whoever is going in first has to have a breach charge. So if we do that, you all non-aggressive enemies guarding this entrance are surprised. Which means if they were aggressive before, everybody's going to be surprised that that's important to have the advantage. And here we have last unit through this entrance does three damage during the breach. Successful shots on enemies during breach will stun. So you kind of like, well, what what is my better advantage here? They both. You know, really when you think about it, this one probably has more advantage. Reaching in. You've got somebody who's alert. See if I can pick off this Legionnaire with one. Since she she took the last shot, he's stunned, so he's not gonna move anywhere. Looking in the timeline, he's got the next move. Followed by the adder over here and the adder over there. So, what can we do? Well, we can protect Zephyr since she's right in the middle of things. Not exactly what I had in mind, but okay. Oh, 
Kraken Skulls. I'm okay for now. There's really nothing else for me to do. So I'll take cover. Let's get your insides back inside. You're the best. There's still a chance we can shoot him. Good shot. Whoa, I'm reading a massive Illyrium core in the next room. It, it, it's losing stability fast. Secure and contain that core before it takes out the whole block. Unstable cores are quite explosive. I speak from experience. Okay. Last unit does three damage. In this case, I think that's going to be the better option. Since we might get damaged anyway. And Making away a we go! He's aggressive, so he's going to make a move, but he's only got 57% chance to hit. Not good odds. Her skill here, Zephyr blitzes towards an enemy, and Malia attacks them after the breach. This will position Zephyr near the enemy. If the enemy was alert, their alert breach action is cancelled. So very useful. Still no good shot. So I'm still going to try for that. Spotted the target. Stop it. ASAP.
I can still fight. Know your limits. Target down for good. Weird. Now there's a 70% chance for me to hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Now the closest one that's in danger here is gonna be Axiom. And his turn is next. Just in case his hit doesn't connect. Eyes open. He's got a, a little safety uh, plan backed up. Target kill. There we go. And here I go. Fast as I can. Punch it. My shield can't take a hit from that guy. Grenade out. So preparation is kind of like in XCOM 2, whenever you hunker down. Quickly see if there's anybody that needs healing. Well, she's probably going to need safeguarding though. Which further boosts her, her defenses. Move her up. All right. So I'm going to advance Cherub here. Popping over. I love Axiom. <laughs> I used to hate mutons. Oh gosh. And then the berserkers. Who boy. Smashing extremity. Break the hostile. Good hit. Looks like it did good. And see, because I captured three of them. I had a 60% chance to get 20 intel. You're gonna need it. And when you can get free intel, you might not get free money. But this is something you can do on every single encounter. You might as well do it. So, I got 20 intel and 35 credits. From the archives, Bradford. Aliens in your agency? Jane, what are you thinking? Kelly, what is our greatest existential threat? The elders returning. If they do, who we need them to fight them off? Everyone. I get it. I've seen the projections. But do you really think the commander will go for this? I think the commander has always seen the bigger picture. What's interesting about this is 
Kelly, who's in charge of the Chimera Squad here, and was from previous XCOM, is talking to Bradford. Central. The thing is, is the commander in XCOM 1 and XCOM 2 has always been you. My question in Chimera Squad is, who is commanding them? Everyone's talking to you, but who are you? I wonder if we'll find out. Gray Phoenix is after large quantities of Illyrium. Why do they need that much power? Illyrium access would allow them to refine an explosive powerful enough to kill Mayor Nightingale. Gray Phoenix has the means. Find out if they had the motive. Okay, and as you see, we have an updated investigation status. Pretty much everything that Kelly just told us. Oh, now you can select an agent to add to your squad. The director convinced the city council we're too understaffed to be effective. This means we can bring more agents to City 31. It's not the whole squad, not yet, but it's something. Now, I kept on quibbling back and forth about Verge, so I'm glad that he is a choice here. Um, normally, I like snipers. In fact, I beat XCOM 1 with a sniper by building them up. Oh, God, it was perfect. One shot killed the elders. <sighs> I wish I had recorded that. It was so beautiful to see. But in this case, you have a little bit more power options. I would like to have a sniper. I like snipers. I think Verge would be... Plus, I like his personality. Verge, welcome to our temporary home. What are your thoughts on exposed steel girders? Remarkably positive. They reduce risk of psionic attack. Really? Ha. Huh. No. The steel does nothing. We are completely exposed to a psionic incursion. Thanks for the next few weeks of fear-powered insomnia. <laughs> awesome. We've connected Gray Phoenix to a recent spate of alien abductions in City 31. Find out why Gray Phoenix wants these aliens. We need to get them home. Okay. Anything in purple is going to be something that's mission critical. Something that could help you either um, cut down the amount of time that there's um, uh, unrest in the city, uh, which is displayed here. This is going to show you how much unrest is going to happen if you don't address it. By looking at this here, you can find out you'll get plus two days towards the Operation Reveal. And right here, you have five days to get this. So, you have to really think about what your options are. What do you need? Like this Chimera Squad, I'm Commissioner Maloof of 31 PD. To be blunt, I don't give a chrysalid's ass about the politics. I'm glad you're in the city. 31 PD was stretched thin before the mayor's death. There are gaps to fill, and that's where you come in. When your agents can handle a situation better than my officers, I'll send the details your way. If the city council has a problem with that, I'll take the heat. They can't afford to fire me. I look forward to working with you. See here, you can get a target analyzer. Might be helpful. Here you get intel, but since we're going to be trying to trank people and try to get as much intel as possible, this might not be such a... Uh, Good reward for us to try and consider. So, since this cuts down and you don't get these options, all these options will disappear. Except for the except for the uh, faction target. That won't disappear. It will just continue to increase in unrest day after day after day until it's handled. But the rest of these will reshuffle and something different will show up. So you won't get this option again. Once it's done, it's done. So, let's take a look. Let's see what we have. We have 65 credits. What could we put that towards? We 
could put in more trank rounds and having two people with trank rounds means you have double the amount of, uh, of instances and opportunities for you to be able to get intel. That's important. Ceasefire worked for us pretty good. Flashbangs, considering what I've seen recently, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to use flashbangs. Let's get trank rounds. Give it to somebody else. But in the meantime, and in between times, so you see here we have one more day working on this android personnel unit. We could put somebody and train them. And since Verge is sitting out there in Wonderland, we're going to go ahead and train him. Because we'll probably need terminal for the next couple of missions. So you don't just get healed when you do training. You also get bonuses. Like in this case here, Verge gets a an increase of health by two, which he needs. Because he's a psionic. And they have low health for some reason. Unless you're playing XCOM 2. In which they seem to have a life bar this big. As you see, that's going to take two days. Not bad. I don't have enough to put anybody in spec ops or in assembly yet. I want them trained up first. I think that's more critical than anything else. Now, give him trank rounds too. One thing I like is you can tint their body armor. I like that on her. That. Mm. Oh. Which, what do you think? That one? That one. I think I like that one better. That's something a lot of people did in XCOM, is tint their soldiers so that they have a, a glance, a knowledge of what specialties they are. That really isn't needed here. It's still fun to do. Yeah, I think Lavender's good for him. Yeah, red. I think we'll do that. Sounds good to me. Okay. I think this is the most important. So we're gonna go on this one. Hostile forces need leadership to function. If authorized by the director, you may need to neutralize a hostile leader. Subduing your target is always preferred. Enemy leadership, if captured, provides valuable intel. A deal, good deal. I don't think we have any other breaching type gear at this time. Go ahead and launch. Gray Phoenix set up a meet at this chemical plant. Disrupt it. Hmm. Hmm. 
Let's see. For explosive, all non-aggressive enemies guarding this entrance will be surprised, and the first unit will get plus three damage during the breach. See, that's double. That's... The last unit will get it here, so there's no reason for me not to do this. Getting out my he heavy hitters. Only one encounter, you see? Right here. Just keep that in mind. How's this for an entrance? alert so take him out first VIP heading for an exit. Capture if you can. Sorry about that. I thought I heard something. I actually felt something. Sometimes these truckers that come through here their rigs are so loud and whatnot that it kind of rumbles the bottom of the, the floor. Oh, where are we at? Okay, we've got some aggressives here. And, we got a, and he got a person of interest, and they're going to try and run away. So what we have to do is get to them. Well, this guy's going to have to run through a lot. I don't know if you can run through that door or not. I think by this red flashing stuff, he's going to try to make a break for there. Um, I'm going to put one on myself. On uh, myself. On Cherub. Because he's half damage. He might even already have a wound. Shields up! So you can also aim at things like barrels, which is 100% shot. It doesn't look like it's going to get our person of interest, so let's try it. See what happens. Not much Support damage. My journey. to them. Oh yes, I can. 80%. Might actually be able to take them out. And he misses. Won't slime me down. Let me draw their fire.
target out of play. That was impressive. Terminal sends Gremlin to an ally to restore 4 health, cleanse burning, acid, and poison effects. So, we're going to put that on Zephyr. Let's get your insides back inside. If you think it's best. On the run! Since Cherub is protected with that shield, I feel comfortable doing this. Let me try again. And now it's Axiom's turn. Hostel isn't moving. And we're gonna subdue him. Subdued hostile. Haha, <laughs> laid him out. I'll admit there's a little bit more uh, difficulty in this than it was last time I played. I played a few into this beforehand. I'll have to admit the difficulty is a little bit more... I'll admit the difficulty is ramping up. I work in a vertical farm making pulp from some of the few plants sectoids can eat. It's a big change. The skills you learned in the resistance don't always apply. What's the expression? When all you have is a hammer, everything gets a nail? What is your hammer? A grenade launcher. Or at least one of our project statuses has uh, been completed. And 30 credits. Did you see right here? Is it'll tell you what city the city status is, how much unrest is going on in those particular areas. And you'll see that on the map. An emergency session of the city council voted five to four against a citywide curfew. Councillor Parada spoke for the majority. There is no need for such extreme measures. Mayor Nightingale's death is a tragedy, but to shut down the city due to fear would reject the very principles by which she lived. 3-1 PD remains on high alert throughout City 31. Commissioner Maloof released the following statement. Every 3-1 PD officer grieves for Mayor Nightingale. Rest assured, we will bring those responsible to justice. We'll keep you informed of any developments. Celio Dash reporting for Channel 37. Okay, and as you see here, faction target is now two days. Now you think it would have been three, but remember we advanced one day also. So taking two off of that, and one day that followed up, 
So now you only have two days. That's the kind of things you got to keep in the back of your head. And you'll see the unrest has increased in downtown and in the stacks by two. Usually after a mission like this, you will get what's kind of like a situation where you don't really have your team show up to anything. So let's do that. Which one do we want? This one's got Illyrium. This one's got Intel. Illyrium is used for your special projects to fund for things like equipment and supplies. Intel, on the other hand, can buy you some things off of the um, black market. Considering we have a deficiency in Illyrium, I'll go with that. And it will warn you each time that this is going to advance the day. Okay, so Verge has completed his training. Spontaneous vigils broke out in honor of Mayor Nightingale, whose recent death still roils City 31. Thousands of citizens wish to pay their respects to our city's first freely elected mayor, said one attendee. She got it, you know? It wasn't about making things better for me and mine. Hybrid, alien, human, she did her best for all of us. The city council voted unanimously to hold elections within the month. Councillor Parada released the following statement. Mayor Nightingale once said, Governance does not need popular approval, but it requires the people's consent. This is Celio Dash for Channel 37. Something that I think that um, is really relevant to these times. I really do. So we've got promotions. I'm so sure you already know your way around the armory. Uh, each of you has a locker here, but it's also where we announce field promotions, which I'm doing now. Really? Who? Wait, you mean me? Congratulations. I realize now there should have been a cake. <laughs> Promotion to rank deputy agent has unlocked Phalanx. Enemies focus their fire on Cherub, it's Cherub, Cherub, I'm not exactly sure. If it's CH, so Cherub, let's do that. Ignoring other XCOM units at this breach point. Block all damage and gain one charge for each attack. One use per mission. Now as you see here with certain tiers, you'll get a choice between two different things. So in a lot of ways it's like other XCOM. Those ones were mandatory, so there's really no choice. So let's look at terminal. Promotion to rank deputy agent. Refresh. The gremlin heals all eyes. Allies. At their breach point for two hit points. One use permission. That's everybody. That's very useful before you go in for a breach. All right. She has parry. An extra action from momentum can be spent to prevent damage from the next attack instead of moving. So kind of like the psionics. Um, I can't remember the group. Um, in XCOM War of the Chosen, there was a psionic group that could do that. Very handy. I never got to use them as much. I guess because it, in the in game, it really didn't explain their powers very much, and so I didn't want to experiment and lose them. So I wound up not using the Cyanox very much. All right, battering ram burst through a door breach point with a chance to panic nearby enemies. Panic chains increases with rage. Awesome. All right, since we've got this taken care of we've got other projects that we can work on weapons and it'll give you a list here 
about the cost of an Illyrium, time, and the re what you will gain from it, the rewards. So, an auto loader, stock, expanded magazine, armor, infiltrator weave, extra padding, and mock weave. I think armor can, just because of what I know about XCOM and the 100% misses, I think it's best to err on the side of caution and get armor. So, we're gonna do that. gonna hate to do it but terminal needs to get this as soon as possible because she is so integral she's like the only medical unit that you have so yeah when you can if you can afford it do it and since there's two more days before we go into the main um, crux of that particular scenario Got two days. I'm going to go ahead and train her for those two days so she'll be ready whenever we go in on that mission. Of course, that means I will fill her position with Burge. Alright, we've got everything sorted out. But unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you sticking with me. I've had a lot of different difficulties arise recently. What with uh, figuring out OBS, the, the setup that I have, and uh, observation. I want to continue that, and hopefully I get to. But until then, I've got to have some kind of content. And I love XCOM. It's science fiction. So... I hope you enjoy it. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And um, if you've played XCOM before, leave in the comments what's your favorite XCOM. And better yet, what are some moves that you've pulled off in XCOM that just blew your mind? And until next time, stay safe. And I'll see you later.